students in the last lesson we have seen the causes and consequences of the two world wars in today's class let us go a little deeper and delve into the russian revolution the rise of nazi party and the history that happened between both the wars Tsarist Russia has a huge land mass that was spread across two continents of Europe and Asia and it was a Euro-Asian power. The term Tsarist characterizes absolute dictatorship. With the third largest population in the world with 156 million people after China and India, Russia consisted of various like Russia, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Turkomania, etc. The people mainly dependent on agriculture for livelihood while the feudal lords had control over the lands. The control of the feudal lords was one of the main reasons for tensions between the peasants and the feudal lords. Tsar Nicholas II ruled the empire of Russia in the autocratic way with the help of the army and bureaucracy. But Russia suffered very much due to the world war. Although Russia had the largest army in the world before the World War I, Russia lost 2 million soldiers by 1917 during the war. In addition to the lives lost, there was shortage of food in the cities as the food was diverted to the war fields. On March 8, 1917, nearly 10,000 women undertook a procession in St. Petersburg demanding for peas and bread. This procession was joined by workers. Tsar Nicholas II ordered the army to suppress the procession which even included firing. But what happened was the soldiers also joined the procession. The situation worsened within two days so much that the Tsar gave up his power and the non-aristocratic Russians formed a provisional government. Students, this came to be known as the Russian Revolution of 1917 or the March Revolution. In October the same year, a bigger revolution took place. The liberals and the autocrats who ruled Russia after the Tsar gave up his power made a decision to continue the war so that they can preserve the honor of their fatherland. Students, one interesting point here is that the Russia followed a Julian calendar until February 1st, 1918. It later changed the Gregorian calendar which is followed everywhere today. As the Georgian dates are 13 days ahead of the Julian calendar, it can be seen that the February Revolution, as it is actually called, took place on 12th March and the October Revolution took place on 7th November. So, now let us get back to our lesson. The common people were not interested in the war as a result of the economic shortages and the military reverses. As a result, the people began to organize themselves into councils which were called Soviets. The Soviets of the soldiers, industrial workers and the people in rural areas served as the medium for the expression of power of the common people in the country. This was guided by a Russian communist group called the Bolsheviks who were led by Vladimir Lenin. As the Bolsheviks took up the demands for immediate and unconditional peace, nationalization of all land and its redistribution and control over prices and nationalization of all factories and banks, they were successful in winning the confidence of the Soviets which were the councils of peasants, workers and soldiers. During October-November 1917, the Soviets led by the Bolsheviks took over the provisional government. The Bolsheviks took all the measures to end the war and redistributed the land to the peasants. Complete peace could not be returned to Russia as a civil war began under the leadership of white armies of Russian monarchists and anti-communist soldiers with the help from Britain, France, USA and Japan. All the powers were defeated by the year 1920. Gradually, most of the former nations of the Tsar Empire agreed to join the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics or USSR 
set up in 1925 by the Soviet government of Russia. The Bolsheviks then announced the end of the Russian Empire and allowed for various nations to become independent. The USSR tried to build a society which was industrialized and modern and also which did not have inequality or exclusion of people either on the basis of birth, gender or language, etc. Children, let us now look at a detailed timeline of the events that happened between 1850s and 1929. Between the years 1850 and 1880s, there were debates over socialism in Russia. By socialism we mean community ownership and control of all lands and business rather than ownership by individuals. In 1898, the Russian Social Democratic Workers' Party was formed. In 1905, the Bloody Sunday took place, the Sunday on which the protesters who were on their way to meet Tsar Nicholas II were fired by the soldiers. On the 2nd March 1917, the Tsar was abdicated while on 24th October 1917, the Bolshevik uprising took place in Petrograd. Between 1918 and 1920, the civil war took place in Russia between Bolsheviks and anti-Bolsheviks. In 1919, the common turn was formed, while in 1929, the collectivization began, in which individual land and labor was consolidated into collective farms. Students, we have seen how the Bolsheviks established their rule in Russia. Now. Let us see the rise of Stalin in Russia and his impact. 